Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufia. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time aboard, welcome to the channel. Hopefully you like it enough to subscribe and stay for more videos. If this is not your first time on the channel, you may have some problems and you may want to seek some help. The content we make is fucking garbage, don't tell anyone. But enough of that nonsense, let's get stuck in, shall we? We're here today for a how to play guide on how to play True Draco. The deck's been around a little while, so most people do know how to play it. The thing is with the deck is it's one of those ones that you can quite easily succumb to if you really don't know its weak points. If you don't know how the deck plays, you can't possibly learn how to defeat it, and it can and will take you by surprise, particularly things like regionals, or you know, you'll get that one player at locals who just insists on playing the deck because they just want to floodgate the fuck out of you. And those are the kind of things that we have to look at on A, how to defeat, but B, how to be better prepared to protect if you do want to pilot the deck yourself. It's worth noting that a lot of players absolutely fucking hate this deck, but you're probably not here to hear that. You just want to come here and learn how to get some free and easy wins. Well, hopefully after this video, you'll know all the basics you need to know to get started with the deck or be better prepared to play against it. As a quick note before we get started, if you are looking to pick up the singles for this deck, you should check out Jam Jam Cards UK. There's a link in the description to their eBay store with an exclusive discount courtesy of yours truly. So go check it out, get yourself some cheap singles. And if you're interested in anything like sign cards or anything like that from the channel, you can go ahead and ask for one of those too, and we'll make that arranged for you. But again, that's enough waffling from me. Let's get stuck right in to the video. True Draco debuted into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG in mid-2017 in Maximum Crisis. In terms of the lore, the deck is closely associated with the True King archetype, and between the two they have extensive links to seemingly every single fucking archetype released into the TCG that's ever been made. Okay, so maybe I'm exaggerating a little, but there really is links with a great many archetypes, so I won't delve into that. We don't need you being so bored you'd rather truth through your own hand. The deck has been very successful since its release, so much so that it's been hit both directly and indirectly on every single fucking limited and forbidden list since 2017, and even still now it remains a very viable rogue pick, and can easily pull the rug from under a better player and a better deck by being a deck with just very few natural counters. The deck's been able to win countless regionals, top even more, and top the YCS as recently as January of this year. So what is it that makes True Draco so popular, and how is it played? The True Draco archetype revolves around tribute summoning, and can do so using continuous spells and traps in place of monsters. Those spells and traps are used to generate card advantage, they can gain you draw power, recycle cards, and much more. When the spells are sent to the graveyard, they can destroy a spell or trap on the field. When the traps go to the graveyard, they can destroy a monster. This consistency, the big bodies of the Draco monsters, and their ability to either control the board when going first, or to break them when going second, is something unique amongst decks where normally you would go one way or the other. True Draco has become a bit of a noob stomping deck. They can easily find themselves overwhelmed and absolutely whomped by the deck if they don't know how to handle it, which can be difficult even when a player knows how to play well against the deck because of how resourceful and consistent it can be. On top of the deck's already strong profile, it's made worse by how compatible it is with Floodgates. Being able to use almost any of the strongest ones in the game to stop the opponent from being able to play their own game is pretty insane. This abuse of Floodgates, and multiple at that, has made the deck infamous and one of the most hated decks in the game. It's really not a rare sight if you take this to something like a regional to sit down across your opponent, and the minute they realise you don't have an extra deck, you'll just hear their sighs. This on its own can actually be a huge advantage because genuinely you put people on tilt from the get-go and they'll lose to themselves. You'll hear the terms helmet deck and monkey deck thrown around on account of the lack of technical ability required to play the deck, but the results speak for themselves. The flip side to all of this is that it can be an excellent deck for a new player on the competitive scene to be able to pick up. It's easy enough to learn to play through, hopefully with the likes of this video, and to be able to grind up wins that they otherwise have no right to be taking. Further to all of this, the deck tends to favour using existing Monarch support and foregoing their extra deck slots in favour of using cards like Monarchs Erupt to skill drain their opponent, all of which makes it a very budget friendly option given that there is no need for an extra deck. That is of course dependent on the variant that you choose to play. Regardless of if you love or hate the deck, it's an effective one for sure and there's definitely a place for the deck in the modern game and despite all of the repeated direct and indirect hits, the deck is here to stay. 
Next, we're going to do a rundown of the true Draco cards, and we'll discuss some ideal ratios as we go along. You'll be able to get some more information on this as we get into some sample decks, just to give you some more ideas of ratios you might like to try. As always with these things, we're going to be reading these effects somewhat shortened. I will show the images on the screen for your perusal, although given that you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player and a true Draco player at that, we both know you probably won't be able to read a fucking thing. We will, however, start off with the monsters. First up, it's Majesty Maiden. It can be tribute summon face up by using a continuous spell or trap instead of a monster. Once per turn when the opponent activates a card or effect while you control this tribute summon monster, you can quick effect add a true Draco or true King monster from the deck to your hand. Following on from that we have Ignis Heat. It can be tribute summon face up by using a continuous spell or trap instead of a monster. Once per turn when the opponent activates a card or effect while you control this tribute summon monster, you can quick effect, add to your hand or activate a true Draco or true King continuous spell from your deck. Next up we have Dynamite Knight aka Knuckles. It can be tribute summon face up by using a continuous spell or trap instead of a monster. Once per turn when the opponent activates a card or effect while you control this tribute summon monster, you can quick effect, add to your hand or activate a true Draco or true King continuous trap from your deck. Dreyath 3, the true Draco Cavalry General. It can be tribute summoned face up by using a continuous spell or trap instead of a monster. Your opponent can't target true Draco or true King monsters with card effects except for this one. Also, they can't be destroyed by an opponent's card effects. If this face up tribute summon monster leaves the field, you can special summon one true Draco or true King monster from your deck in defense position. It is worth noting at this point that if you special summon them this way, they won't have their effects to search. Masterpiece, the true fun slaying king. It can be tribute summon face up by using continuous spells or traps as well as monsters. It's unaffected by the effect of cards with the same card type, monster, spell or trap as the cards used for its summon. Once per turn, quick effect, if you control this tribute summon monster you can banish a continuous spell or trap from your graveyard to target and destroy a card on the field. Metaltron 12, the true Draco combatant. It requires three tributes to normal summon and it can't be normal set. It can be tribute summoned face up by using continuous spells or traps as well as monsters. Unaffected by the effects of cards of the same type, monster spell or trap as cards used for its summon. If this tribute summon monster in its owner's control is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can special summon a fusion, synchro or exe monster that is earth, water, fire or wind from your extra deck. At the time of recording this video, Masterpiece is banned and for good reason, the card is absolutely insane and dynamite is limited. You will commonly see a lineup consisting of a single copy of Dynamite, two to three copies of Majesty Maiden, and three copies of Ignis Heat. Dreyath and Metaltron aren't commonly played, although they do see some experimentation when the meta calls for it, for example being incredibly strong against decks such as Sky Striker, who generally speaking struggle to deal with either of them. Next up we're taking a look at the spells and traps. So we start off with one of the most powerful field spell cards in the game, Dragonic Diagram. All true Draco and true King monsters on the field gain 300 attack and defense. Each turn, the first time a true Draco or true King monster would be destroyed by battle, it's not destroyed. Once per turn, you can pop another card in your hand or on your side of the field to add a true Draco or true King card from your deck to your hand. Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix. You can target three true Draco or true King cards in your graveyard, shuffle them into the deck, and then draw a card. During your main phase, you can tribute summon a true Draco or true King monster face up. This means that it won't eat your normal summon for the turn. That's an important thing to note and uh, something that comes into play an awful lot. If this card is sent from the spell and trap zone to the graveyard, you can destroy one spell or trap on the field. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Cool bit of trivia for you. You can't use magical hats with this deck. I tried it before. I didn't read like a typical Yu-Gi-Oh player. It has to go from your spell and trap zone to the graveyard. True Draco Heritage. During your main phase, you can draw cards equal to the number of True Draco and True King card types, Monster Spell and Trap, that have been sent from the field to the graveyard this turn. During your main phase, you can tribute summon a True Draco or True King monster face up. If this card is sent from the Spell and Trap zone to the graveyard, you can destroy a Spell or Trap on the field. Each effect is a hard once per turn. True King's Return. If it's sent from the Spell and Trap zone to the graveyard, you can target and pop a monster on the field. You cannot activate the following effects on the same chain. You can special summon a true Draco or true King monster from your graveyard in defense position. Also for the rest of the turn, you can't special summon. During your opponent's main phase, you can tribute summon a true Draco or true King monster face up. Each effect is a hard once per turn. And lastly, we have true Draco apocalypse. If it's sent from the spell and trap zone to the graveyard, you can target and pop a monster on the field. 
you cannot activate the following effects on the same chain. You can target one other true Draco or true King card you control, destroy it, and if you do, half the attack and defense of all face-up monsters your opponent controls, even if this card leaves the field. During your opponent's main phase, you can tribute summon a true Draco or true King monster face-up. Each effect is a hard one per turn. Dragonic Diagram and True King's Return are both limited at this time. Generally speaking, players max out on copies on all of these cards in most instances. For the penultimate part of our video, I just wanted to briefly discuss some of the common cards that we see in play in True Draco decks. For the most part, the deck doesn't flex too much in terms of what gets played, but there are some options you could look at depending on which variant you're considering using and according to the meta. The following list is not exhaustive, but it should give you some ideas of what you could try out. Stunny Boys. We commonly see Inspector Border and Amano Iwato being used in this deck, both of these being largely format dependent, but these stuntastic cards are there for one reason and one reason only, to cuck the opponent. Consistency Boosters. The deck is usually pretty consistent once it gets going, but due to the small monster count and with cards like Dragonic Diagram and Card of Demise being limited, it's common to see the deck try to push down some other lines of consistency boosting. Cards like Part of Duality, Part of Desires and more. These are even more necessary with all of the indirect hits the deck has seen in this area. Back Row the deck naturally likes to make heavy use of back row in general, and taking advantage of blowout cards such as the Solemn Brigade can be an excellent choice of line to follow. Monarch Support Because of the nature of this deck, using the Tribute Summon mechanic to the highest possible benefit, it's willing to forego its extra deck, which it frankly doesn't need, in order to access Monarch Support options such as the Monarchs Erupt, the Monarch Stormforth, Strike of the Monarchs, and March of the Monarchs being some of note. Floodgates we all knew this one was coming. Floodgates are the reason people have such a sour taste in their mouths when it comes to True Draco. But it would be foolish not to take advantage of these when they are there for free wins to be had. It's hubris to turn them down. Nobody remembers how you win, only if you do. These can be swapped and changed out from format to format, some being effective, but in other formats they can be absolutely useless. And for the last part of this video, we'll be taking a run through some of the sample deck lists to give you some ideas of what you can try out. As always, these won't be perfect, but they'll give you some sense of ratios, versions you could try out, and more. It's worth noting that these won't have been extensively tested, just more theoretical than anything else, so do keep this in mind that these are not going to be perfect builds, but something that you could start off with and build from. As a quick note before we continue, if you are looking to pick up some of the singles for the deck after this video, you should check out the link in the description to channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. The link will get you a cheeky discount on their eBay store, courtesy of yours truly. Anyway, enough of my bullshit, we'll get into the sample decks for you now.
This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.